Uh, good afternoon. Uh, in uh, this chapter, chapter five, uh, this is, will be uh, the continuation of the uh, previous chapters, but in this, in this time, we are going to, uh, uh, for the deep water uh, pipe networks. Uh, water pipe networks in general, uh, it will be the step after, uh, after what we had with, uh, after the purifying water. Uh, water treatment plant or water have been supplied through the river or the intake structures and through the sump uh, to the water treatment plant to the first unit and then uh, we designed for the sump and then we uh, went through the treatment process, sedimentation, coagulation and uh, flocculation and then um, uh, filtration and disinfection. These are all the processes and uh, more and less, uh, uh, there will be more detail if you want, but uh, I think uh, the time is not limited, uh, it's limited. So this is, will be uh, sufficient for you as an engineer. Now, after what we had in the, uh, so we have, uh, now we, has, uh, we have a treated water, we have a very clean water, and we want to submit it to the people. Now, what will be the process here? The process is that uh, we have the uh, river and there will be a water treatment plant. Uh, then the clean water should be sent to the city. And in the city, there will be a network. Usually we will have uh, uh, an elevated tank if the, or we have elevated tank. And then we have the, from the elevated tank, we have uh, a distribution network, distribution, distribution network, I mean water distribution network. So water distribution network or water pipe network uh, are the, in the last step of supplying water. So, and then after that we have individuals or uh, customers that we, they need to work. Uh, in this chapter, we will learn how to uh, design, uh, by the way, this is, will be uh, a hydraulic, uh, hydraulic design is the first uh, uh, or the important thing in this design. So hydraulically design, I mean, uh, we have to have a network. This network uh, should have, uh, uh, we have to submit the pipes and the pipe diameters and length. And uh, these are, should be uh, with sufficient pressure. Pressure, I mean by the pressure, the water should have, uh, uh, with the customer should be supplied with a sufficient quantity and pressure. Uh, we want to have a, a customer have a very good uh, quality. Now the quality is okay, but the quantity and the pressure should be uh, applied to this. Uh, Doctor? Yes? The reason for the elevated uh, tanks is to provide uh, during the peak hours of the day Provide yeah. with water. Yeah, thank you for it's the a kind uh, of a backup. Yeah, thank you for the question. It's a very important question. Now, why we need why we need uh, a, 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 an elevated tank, or why we need uh, as a, such a kind of uh, elevated tank or storage tank? Um, let me make it more clean. Now. Uh, why we need elevated tank? Elevated tank, and usually we are, you can see that tanks in the Slemania uh, are a high uh, a tank, high elevated tank. So we need to uh, have at least a sufficient amount already it will be there. Because, you know, during the 24 hours, for example, from midnight, to midnight, and we have 12 a.m., uh, we have 
the demand demand of water liter per capita per day it will be Doctor, sir, we see anything you are not uh, you're not I'm sharing sorry. i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah, yeah. so uh, this is the diagram will show us uh, the liter per capita uh, uh, per hour usually in the midnight till 6 a.m we are uh, the customers are using less amount of water less I mean by the uh, average uh, when we say that we have 250 liter per capita per day this is the average demand so uh, in the six hours that we have the usually the use of water will be very less less than the average we have from 6 to 9 a.m. we have the peak demand we have a peak demand. Peak demand, it means the demand of water will be more than the average. Now, uh, then from nine to 12, there will be a, a, a less amount of demand. Then there will be, a, so there will be a fluctuation. Now, if I wanna supply water to this house, to this person, so uh, the quantity here, you should have at least, um, uh, uh, the water that will be supplied, supplied and uh, uh, used water, or let me say demand, the supply will be high, but the demand will be less. Now, it looks like uh, uh, the, the, the supplied water, the incoming water, if it was 1,000 meter cube per day, for that city, for the first six hours, they don't need that much. If this is, was the uh, design capacity for the treatment plan, for the treatment plan, so the people are in the first six hours. They don't they don't need that much amount. It means that they may use only hundred, and this is only numbers just for making clarifying. Uh, the, the purpose of having elevated tank. So they may need only 100 meter cube per day. And what about the 900, uh, the rest of the uh, supplied water? Where, where shall we have to store it? We have to store it in a tank. So we need to have a storage tank, first of all, for holding the excess amount of of water that will be supplied from the treatment plant to the city and the city are they don't need them now there is a, a other thing that we have in the nine to uh, for example nine uh, a.m to uh, six to nine a.m there will be the demand will be more than the uh, required so we have the supplied water is uh, less than for for example in this Three hours, they may need 1,500 liter per uh, uh, meter cube per day. And the supplied water is only 1,000 meter cube per day. So what should we have to do? We should have at least 500 meter cube per day storage, extra storage. So this is will be uh, uh, done by having a storage tank. So the storage tank, it looks like uh, neutralizing or balancing between the minimum and the maximum demand. This is in terms of uh, quantity. And uh, besides of that, uh, sometimes the supplied water will not be sufficient uh, when they when it's sent to to a city, uh, for example, this is a city. Uh, if this is was uh, okay, this one. These are all uh, residential buildings. So, for example, if I have to supply water to these people living in the houses. So this is the pipe networks. The pipe networks like this. And there are many different ways to supply water to these residential areas. Okay, now the people in living in this house, they will 
just connect the buildings with these uh, pipes and so on. And the buildings are connecting the, uh, the, the houses with these laterals. This is called lateral pipes. Again here, again here, again here. So if we have the source of the pipe, this is what the source. If this is the source, so you can see the visualization of the flow will be from here and we'll go to there and to this house and we'll go to this and will be like this. It looks like the distribution or the pumping blood to the in the nerves. Now, what will we, what will be there in the last houses? This is called dead end. For the dead end, during the flow, the queue from here, there will be head losses. And then the head losses, it means that the water will lose energy and it will not have any sufficient uh, amount of energy or sufficient amount of the pressure that will help uh, the water go to through at least for uh, the first uh, or the let me see that your house was two 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 uh, uh, two level house or let me do uh, double story building or three uh, three multi-story building so the water here uh, it will lose energy I mean by energy ahead and it will lose the quantity so quantity it means that because the little amount of water will come through uh, this pipes and it will get here and so on for the rest. So what we should have to do, we should have at least a balance this requirement by having, uh, raising the level, raising the pressure of water, the incoming water by, uh, some of them are putting a, uh, water tank here to for, for to supply to, to neutralize the demand first and to raise the pressure and sometimes we will put a pump here to uh, help the elevated tank pressure to be more uh, sufficient and the hydraulic by the way the hydraulic design design for such a network it includes head we should have uh, enough head for the nodes. This is called nodes, nodes by the point of connecting pipes. So the pressure at the head or uh, pressure at nodes, nodes should be sufficient and we have requirements by the municipality to say that it shouldn't be less than, uh, it shouldn't be less than uh, two uh, bars or two bars, I mean by two bars, it means uh, 20 meters, it means that a 20 meter head, the water should have an energy to be raised for at least uh, 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 six uh, stories. And this is in terms of head and in terms of quantity, the water or the supplied water should be sufficient to be at least 250 liter per capita per day for that uh, house. Uh, is it now clear why we need us to uh, uh, elevated tank? Yes, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, now we say that, uh, okay. Uh, during the, uh, this process or the distribution of water, we need to have a network. This is called the pipe network. Um, by, so, by the way, we, we have two networks, one for water uh, uh, distribution network and another one we have for sewer uh, this, uh, sewerage or sewer uh, collecting uh, sewers. Uh, we, we will take the sewers in the end of this uh, 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 of this course, but now we are going just to take the pipe, water pipe, and by the way, they are different. Uh, the main difference in uh, between the water uh, distribution network and the sewer is water in the pipe should be fully flow. It means that we don't have partial flow for the water supply. We have the water should be fully flow, and the water should be have enough head. While for the sewer uh, sewerage or uh, sewer collecting system, 
the sewers usually shouldn't be fully, it should be partial flow and the partial flow may mean it shouldn't be more than 75% full, it should be less than full of flow, this is one, and the flow uh, of the sewerage uh, it should be uh, uh, in the sewers, uh, sewage should be, uh, it has only by gravity, the movement of the flow of the sewage in the sewers should be by gravity, not uh, hydraulically uh, pressurized. <coughs> now, here's the main components, here's the main elements of uh, a water distribution network. We should have a store storage and I mean by the storage uh, elevated tank and we have a distribution uh, reservoir. This is an elevated tank. And by the way we have different types of elevated tank. We have ground, ground tank and the ground tank look like what we have uh, near the uh, inside uh, uh, near the inside hospital, near the hospital that we have, uh, the ground level. And uh, this is, we will take benefit from the elevation of the ground itself. And also we have elevated tank like what we have in the districts uh, everywhere. Uh, also we have, uh, based on the materials, we have concrete tank, elevated tank, we have steel, uh, structure, uh, steel tank, all these are tanks that used for storing water. So uh, the first thing in the first point in the element in the water distribution network is to have a storage, storage or elevated tank. Now after that we have to have a pumping station. Now uh, there is a pump station and there is a booster. What's the difference between the pumping and the booster? The pumping is Usually you will have a tank and you will connect a pump and you will send water to the uh, uh, another, another level, another level or another uh, network. Now, so it will be between tank and uh, network. While this is called pump. Boosters, Boosters are just are to pump. make the water quicker, doctor? Booster? Yes. Booster, yeah. Booster, what we have, we will put booster uh, uh, within the network itself. So there will be a pipe, another pipe. So why we need a booster? Because we need to increase the velocity of the flow inside the pump, uh, in, inside the pipe. Also, we need to raise the head. So uh, increasing the flow, the velocity and the head. This is what it's, what's called a uh, booster. So booster uh, and, and different than the pump, normal pump. And after that, uh, uh, we will have a network, the pipe network, the pipe system itself. And then usually, uh, definitely, we need to have uh, valves and fittings. What are the valves? We have different types of valves. We have a uh, closed valve or flow control valve, flow control valve. <coughs> we have check valve. This is non-returning flow. And we have uh, air valve. Uh, this is when we have uh, uh, the, the nature or the topographic of the, of the city is mountainian or that means there's a ter terrainian uh, higher in level and fluctuation in the level. So there will be a uh, air valve, you need an air valve in every crest. Uh, also uh, we have, um, yeah, these are all the valves uh, that we need. Uh, the fittings are the when you are connecting between the pipes, when we have a pipe like this and a pipe like this. So what we need to connect, we need a 90 degree elbow, elbow, uh, uh, this is the elbow, it's called elbow, 90 degree elbow fitting. Sometimes we have double Y fitting. This is a uh, Y and this is Y. So this is called double Y. 
and we have uh, a reducer and we have uh, uh, so we have different types of fittings all these are will be used in in the uh, water distribution networks okay now what is the purpose of distribution network we say the purpose yes excuse me i have one question about the air valves yeah. why do we use air valves in boilers in the homes that we have uh, in homes Our yeah the homes? boiler tanks the boiler, the boiler. Tanks. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that um, that's by the way in the plumbing system it's um, i'm uh, i'm talking about uh, the distribution it means the outdoor but i will answer this uh, look at the your this is your house and uh, usually what we have here uh, if you are living in a house not in an apartment and uh, and the, uh, the process is look like this this is a roof tank and there will be a pipe in inlet pipe this is the boiler and you will use hot water okay and uh, definitely there will be increasing in temperature so what will be here will be a vacuum or negative pressure the pressure of the uh, vacuum it will help and it will make a, a reduce the pressure on this incoming tank so what will be happening you will open the tap water and you will you can you can't uh, see there will not be any flow so the q will equal to zero well, what will we do we should add a, 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 a air air valve here in case that the pressure will be um, not more than a certain level then just relieve the uh, vacuum Okay. to note that the vacuum pressure be more than uh, the, the allowable limit or the head of the pressure on that one to just keep water uh, flowing from the uh, faucet. This is what we have. Uh, in the new buildings or the, let me say, uh, the buildings that they don't have any roof tank. So what do we have? They have a uh, the tank will be in the bottom. This is the tank, ground tank. <clears throat> so what will happen? We have a pump here. The water will be taken from the pump and it will be distributed to the uh, house. In case that if you have, uh, let me say, uh, look at this one. If you have a boiler here, so uh, you need to have a flow then also there will be a pressure on this one also you need to have an air valve here okay so having an air valve it will just to let the vacuum pressure uh, decrease or relieve that pressure and if you're asking me about in case of the water uh, in case in a city so for example if we have um, mountaining area like this and we have a house here there will be another house here this is a house here got okay, this one and what would we have to do when we are sending water to this one uh, uh, then i will submit supply water to this house and to this line and to this line and maybe uh, if I take the profile, the profile of this house, uh, so if the pipe was going this way, um, there will be an increase. So if I'm going this way, I'm sending the water with the, like this, like this. So this is the natural ground level. And this is the pipe. For example, if you are here in Dukan and you want to send the water to Slavonia, there will be within the road, there will be a, a raise and, and draw down. So what will be happen, the water is collected in this pipe and it will increase this pipe and it will, 
So sometimes we are stop, uh, stopping our operation and the operation is break. So the pipe, the water in this uh, area, it will go back to the pump station. And the water here is going to this pump, uh, to, 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 to this joint, and here's to this joint. So what will be happen, there will be an area, here's an area, and this area, or this volume in this network will, will not have any water inside, or it will be a negative pressure. The negative pressure, it means that uh, 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 it will be empty. So it will make a, an area, a volume that will uh, resist the flow. Again, if you are sending water again, there will be look like a valve. So what should we have to do? We have to add air valve here, an air valve in this point and air valve in this point. So the peaks needs to have an air valve just to let the, the air, the, 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 the uh, vacuum pressure will to, to go out and uh, to let the flow go in. And here's, we need a drainage valve. Drainage valve, Sir? yes. I have a question regarding the air, uh, air valve. The, yeah. According to what I understood, does it decrease the pressure somehow? Yes, uh, relieving, relieving the air pressure inside the, the system. Okay. Air pressure inside the, 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 the pipe itself. So it will be somehow a negative pressure. It will act against the flow. It will resist the flow. It will not help the flow. So what should we do? We should uh, pump out, we should bubble out this air. So uh, you should have an, an uh, a valve just to let the air go out. This is the, the need of air valve. And by the way, the, the air valves are very expensive. And usually it will be, uh, uh, it will be uh, uh, you have to, to make it in a very good setting because uh, it will be damaged early. Now, uh, having this network, uh, having these valves in, in, in the network, it will make, uh, uh, losses, head losses. It will add on the head losses and the flow. So it is a part of the water network and the fittings also. Uh, I'm sorry, I, 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 I answered your question. Am I right or what? Yes, thank you very much. Yes, sir. That was a perfect answer, Doc. Okay. Appreciate it. Now also why we need uh, uh, a distribution network because sometimes we need it as uh, for a firefighting and uh, we need to have a storage for that one. So uh, not only the, the, the firefighter uh, trucks are having water, so we should have a fire hydrants. So fire hydrants, and you remember the first slides we said in the chapter one that the fire hydrants will be like this, uh, will be like this, uh, I'm sorry for horrible drawing. And uh, we said this is the natural ground level and the pipe will be connected to the main. This is the water distribution main. This is eight inch and the pipe will be about six inch and there will be a valve here, valve. Just in case of having a fire, we will just open this valve and the water will be ready in the fire hydrant. So, and we say that we have different colors, fire hydrant, different color code for the fire hydrants. That's why uh, uh, based on the available amount of the flow, it can deliver. So it will be connected uh, directly to the distribution network. This is called water distribution. Okay, so you need also to have a distribution network for the firefighting uh, purposes. Now, what are the basics requirement? The basic requirement for a distribution network this time, uh, pipes, should have a durable materials. The pipes that we have nowadays are, uh, 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 we have ductile iron, ductile iron pipe. We have uh, 
uh, we have the black one, we have uh, a high density polyethylene, HDPE uh, pipes. These are the two mains that we have uh, nowadays. And uh, now, if you are going out of Slimani towards the Tasroja, you can see on the right, left hand, in the pipes that we have ductile iron pipe. What are the ductile iron pipe? They are the pipes that will be just have a, a, a like this shape. And so, Um, what we uh, this is called spigate and uh, bell bell and spigate uh, when we need to just connect between two pipes so that just we need to have a rubber and have a pressure the pressure just you have to make a pressure between two pipes and it's very good pipes and they are tactile but the the main uh, 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 disappoint or disadvantage of these pipes, we cannot weld in. So if you are going to design your network with the tactile iron pipe, you should be careful because when we have, for example, inside a city, when we have corners, the corners, we are, we cannot do anything to this kind of pipes. We don't have any elbow, by the way. So uh, uh, this is, will not be used inside the city. We just need it uh, for uh, the main pipes that will uh, transfer in or convey water from uh, between the cities and uh, for the main pipes. Main pipelines will be used for the, uh, and the rest, the high density polyethylene pipes are nowadays the black one. Uh, we have, uh, it's very, uh, uh, very good pipes and it will be, and by the way, we, can, we don't need to have a fitting for these pipes. It will be, the fittings will be very uh, seldom used because we can use infusion to just uh, weld the pipes together. So welding will be used for edge high density polyethylene pipes. The welding will be within the infusion machine. It means laser, laser uh, and uh, heating. Doctor, uh, for the ductile iron pipes, they should be galvanized, correct? Yeah, of course. Of course. Otherwise, uh, they will uh, uh, totally. Uh, no, uh, the ductile iron pipe. Uh, uh, it, it is by itself. Uh, it is uh, uh, galvanized. It means that uh, it's not an iron pipe. It's a ductile pipe. The tactile ones, um, uh, it's an iron and have been processed more to, and it became a tactile pipe. Yeah. While we have for the cast iron pipe, cast iron pipe, the cast iron pipe is the one that we have it in the previous, in the, our houses, by the way, uh, in, in, in the past, um, this is, should be galvanized. So any cast iron pipe should be galvanized. And the data already is manufactured with the, uh, with the, yeah, it's galvanized already. Uh, other than, than this pipes, I think I have a list of the pipes. Yeah, cast iron pipe and steel pipes, by the way. And also in the past, we had uh, reinforced concrete pipes, by the way, pre stressed concrete pipes and polyethylene, the polyethylene and the high density polyethylene, uh, high density polyethylene, what is the difference between them? Polyethylene one is the one that we can see it in our houses, but the high density polyethylene is the one that we can, you can uh, see uh, when they are uh, in the distribution network inside the city, in the laterals, in the uh, streets, so we can use the high density pipe for the, and this is now, these are not used, just the high density used. And also UPVC, UPVC, it's and plastic, and this is will be uh, plastic polyethylene, this is the unplasticized poly, uh, polyvinyl fluoride. This is usually used for sewers, 
and uh, drains. Okay, they are have thin layer thickness. Doctor, okay. the yes. purpose of using the pre-stressed concrete pipes is to prevent from uh, deflection, stuff like that. I, uh, sometimes uh, we have to pass to convey water uh, um, uh, between, um, for example, uh, in, in, in a tunnel. Uh, for example, if we have Sleimani, if we have Azmar tunnel, so they don't use, uh, usually, they, 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 in a case, they will use the uh, pre stressed concrete. So, uh, pre-stressed concrete used to free, in a case that we have, for example, um, uh, a load on the pipes, and we are uh, uh, to just prevent uh, uh, the, to have any polyethylene. Polyethylene, high density polyethylene, it's okay to it's a very good pipe, but somehow it's elastic, and uh, it shouldn't be. For example, when we have a very high load on that one the pre-stressed concrete will be used in that case. So when we have a load on uh, the W or how many kilonewton per meter length of the pipes, uh, it will be uh, when we have a high value of this, high value of the kilonewtons, then we are going to use the uh, pre-stressed concrete pipe instead of any other pipes. This is will be in case of having very load on that pipes. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, reinforced concrete pipe also, uh, some of the, sometimes we are using this kind of pipes when we have a very high diameter of the pipes. For example, uh, for three to four meters diameter. So what should we do if we need to have a pipe of three meters diameter? You can you can't see you can't uh, have a cast iron pipe, a ductile iron pipe, or steel pipe, even for, for polyethylene pipes in this um, in this diameter. So what we will do, we will just uh, cast uh, the concrete uh, in that area, and we will put the reinforcement, and then. Uh, uh, make a free face uh, pipe in, 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 in cast in place. And uh, we will manufacture, this is will be uh, in site. So it will be manufactured, it will be constructed in site. Okay. Now, uh, this is what we have in the type. So that should be durable materials. Also, more of the feeders and sure flood. We have to have a continuity of the flow. Uh, we have something called dead zones. Um, dead zones are the zones that uh, the end of the distribution network. It means that the last houses or the last point that after that the pipe will be closed or there is no any diversion of the flow. Uh, because if we have to avoid that, uh, uh, these zones. Having a dead zone in the network, it means that the water chlorine, the chlorination for the water or the uh, free available or uh, residual chlorine will not reach that point. It means the grow of the bacteria and the grow of the microorganisms in that area, but will help to uh, contaminate all the network. That's why we have to uh, ever to, 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 to avoid these zones. Okay, we have to control the flow by having a valves and meters. Protection of the water from the pollution, we have to have, uh, this is the very important thing, and the capacity to meet the maximum demand. The diameters, diameters of the pipes should be enough much and the velocity uh, of these pipes in the flow in the pipes should be enough just to um, be adequate for maximum case. The maximum case we are going to design a network uh, water distribution uh, for a city based on maximum of what? Of uh, maximum uh, hourly demand, peak hourly demand or uh, demand 
daily demand plus fire. You know that there will be a fire demand, then you have to calculate that. And there will be a daily demand, a maximum daily demand. And add them together and compare between this amount and the peak hourly demand. The peak hourly demand, it means 2.48 times the average demand. So in this two equation, uh, this one or that one, which one is giving you the maximum flow, then the, this system will be designed based on that. Now, we have different uh, systems. We have different type of the pipe connection. One of the first, the first one or the traditional one, it's called the tree system. I mean by the tree, we have a source and there will be a main and there will be laterals and there will be houses. There will be houses. There will be main, there will be lateral, there will be houses. So it will be look like a tree. So this is tree or dead end. Why dead end? Because these are end point. And dead end, dead end uh, will, uh, we have to have a, a closed valve in this point and and this is what I said, uh, water will be, the uh, free chlorine will not reach that point. So the ground of the microorganisms will be, uh, will be uh, here in these points and will, uh, will help in uh, polluting the system. Uh, it will be cheaper, yes, because we don't, uh, the length of the pipes will be very less. Calculation will be very easy because we have the Q here and there will be Q, there will be Q1, Q2. So Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. And uh, we start from here, we know the Q1 and then if you have a Q, uh, you have the Q, you have a velocity allowable and now I will uh, show you how, how much is the available or the allowable velocity. The velocity in the pipes should not uh, be less than 0.6 meter per second and should not be more than 1.5 meter per second. As I told you, this is for not scouring and this is for, the, uh, for not be uh, greater than 0.6 to not allow uh, the settlement or uh, sedimentation of the uh, particles of the solid materials in that this way. So the pipe uh, velocity we know, yeah. So the velocity it will be between 0.6 to 1.5 meter per second. Now you have the Q, you have the velocity, so you will find the area. The area is equal to Q divided by or the velocity, uh, uh, yeah, uh, velocity. So we can find the phi or the diameter of the pipes. And after that, we will calculate the head loss. Head loss uh, by having the diameter and the velocity, we can use them to find the head losses in the pipe. Uh, so it will be very easy. Now, disadvantages of this pipe I present for the dead ends. We have a lot of dead ends here. And also, if the main pipe line let's say if this main pipe, we have a sudden break in this uh, pipe or the pipe broken, what will be happen? The whole system will stop. You cannot supply water for the whole city because of having a break in the pipe. That's the very uh, disadvantage point in this system. While we have another point, we have another system which is called loop system. Here's the loop system. This is, by the way, this is the three systems. This is called the mains. And this is called distribution pipes. And you can see these are all dead zones. Uh, the ring or the loop system, you can see, this is the main pipeline, you can see. This is the main. And by the way, this is for the landscape of the city. So this okay. is called a loop. 
or loop or a ring it looked like a ring system so the water will be available uh, 24 hours in this loop now what will be happen for example this is a uh, for example this uh, district or this area they have uh, to be uh, the water we should be supplied to them so we will supply the water through this one in case that we have a problem in this by the way you have to have a valve here and valve here and valve here in case we have a problem in this uh, city we just close this one and we will uh, maintenance will be done for this area and without if you want to if there is a problem in this uh, pipeline i will just have a valve here i will just close these two valves and i will check and i will fix the problem in this part without uh, touching or without uh, um, um, without uh, non uh, supplying water for the other uh, area so a uh, ring or circle system is very good than than the uh, tree system. Now, uh, uh, determination of the discharge, also the pressure will be easy. And by usually we are using uh, a soft skill in this area. It means um, I will use uh, water cut and I will use sometimes a panet I will use other softwares that uh, help us to just find the flow and the diameter in the pipes and the velocity. Uh, there are two direction of flow. Yes, if the pipe, if one pipe is broken, like what I said, if this pipe was broken, so that you can have another direction. So this pipe, this area, you can have it from this way or you can have it from this way. Uh, if you have this part is broken, so there will be another way to kind of to reach water to this area. Okay. Uh, uh, now, what is the disadvantage of this one? We have also dead ends. Uh, so there will be dead ends. And uh, even it's less than the tree system, but there is a dead end. And the high cost of this system. This system is... Uh, is um, costing too much because you have to cover all the city. Okay, this main pipes, we should just cover all the city, make a ring, a ring, a ring pipe system for all these cities will be, sometimes you don't, for example, if you have a tree, you don't need to just uh, have this pipe from here to there. You just do one pipe and this one pipe will just send to the laterals. But because we are using a, uh, rings, uh, you have to just cover the surrounding area. Now, this kind of the systems will be used for the flat area, like Erbil, like Baghdad, and uh, they, they need such kind. And the booster pumps, by the way, booster pumps will can be uh, laid in the middle or any points that we need just to accelerate the movement of water. While for the tree, we, uh, we don't, uh, in the mountain, or if you have a change in the elevation, you don't, it will be difficult to put a ring, uh, a ring system, or a, uh, a circle system in that area. You should go back to the tree system, like what we have in Slimani. The last thing that we have, the last part, is the grid, grid iron system. Uh, no dead end, no stop in the network during the repair mobile, but this is, will be very expensive. There will be a large number of the pumps. There will be a need to complicate analysis. This is the, yeah, the high uh, level pump. This is pump. And there will be a ring. Here's a ring. And there will be another part and this is called grid. So these are, the red one are the main pipes. Now look at the distribution pipes. Here's the distribution pipe. So you have to have for each one, these are all valves. For each node, this is called node, we have four valves around the node. One, two, three, four. 
So and the number of the valves is equal to the number of the nodes times four. For example, here one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So we have eighteen nodes. The exterior ones are two. The there will be type one, this is two, two valves. Here we need three valves, here we need four valves. So one, two, three, four, we have four times four. We have 16 valves just for this region. And we have valves for the other ones. And uh, by the way, the, the cost of the valves are very important to be considered in during the design of any network. Okay, uh, now we have done with the types. Uh, okay, this is the uh, node dead end and that the uh, most expensive as we clearly said, and larger number of the valves and not need complicated design. Uh, now this is the main idea. This is the main layout of the networks and how to design a pipe distribution network. There are many methods to design uh, water distribution for a city or for an area, but all of them, they should be uh, maintain the following points. First of all, the velocity in the pipe should not be less than 0.6. As I told you, the water in the pipe will, should be in a range that it will not help uh, the, or accumulate uh, the solid particles if we have to accumulate in this, or sometimes we have the, uh, the, due to the water will be uh, having an alkalinity, so there will be uh, um, kind of rust in these pipes. So it should be more than 0.6 meter per second, and also the velocity should be less than 1.5, because after one, having 1.5, the flow will be considered as a turbulent, uh, and it will, uh, it will be a disaster for the pipe. Uh, the diameter of the pipes, we don't have less than 100 millimeters, by the way. So you will start with 100. Uh, 100 diameters, so it will be uh, about um, four inch and or more. And uh, so the layout of the pipes, I'm going to design the main and the distribution pipes. Uh, um, the pipe connecting between the house and the distribution, uh, this is have been um, justified by the municipality. It shouldn't be more than two inch. So it should be less than two inch uh, pipes. And some of them are using just 1.5 inch pipe. This is the connector. A connector, it means from between the house. For example, if you have a house here, you have just, this is what should be in, uh, 100 millimeters or more, but the connectors between the house and the main shouldn't be uh, more than 1.5 inch or two inch pipes. Uh, again, uh, uh, the head loss between a point to another point, uh, this is, should be considered. The, when I have, for example, here is a point. This is the main pipe. This is a point like A. I will design a pipe. And this pipe is B. And then we have a C. Uh, and then we have a D. And we have an E. We say that the pipe diameter shouldn't be less than 100. If I say I, this is, I have 100 millimeters. And if the length of this pipe was about uh, one kilometer's length. So uh, during the flow, the flow is going from this point to that point. So the Q, there will be a Q in this pipe. Uh, after this Q, there will be uh, uh, the area of this pipe is pi d square over four. And I have the diameter, so I have the velocity of this pipe. So I have to apply this equation. The equation is the head loss in this pipe. The head loss how much is the length is the length between this point and that point? How much is the velocity is the Q divided by the area? How much is the diameter is the 100 millimeters? And this is the F is the depend on the friction factor. And I think you, you, you take it in the fluid mechanics. So uh, what, what, what left for you, you will find the head. 
loss, the head loss between A to B. And uh, this head loss shouldn't be more than, uh, it will should be between one to three percentage of the pressure. So the pressure in this point and the pressure at that point, the difference between the pressure, it will give you a head loss. This head loss divided by L, it will give you a S, the slope of the hydraulic, it's called hydraulic rate line slope. This slope shouldn't be more than 3%. What 3% means? If you have 5%, it means that the decrease of the level of the, it means that you have a lot of hair loss. You have a lot of losses in, the, in this one kilometer. So what should you do? You should in, decrease that head loss. By what? By changing the diameter, or by increasing the flow, or by raising the pressure at point A, and so on. So you have, as an engineer, you have to solve this problem. And these are the main idea, or these are the main criteria for the design of the networks. Uh, the methods we say that we have, first of all, we have the Darcy flow equation. This is one of the equations. And we have the William Hazen formula. It's also used for, the, uh, for designing the networks. In, in the pipes, we, in, the, in this Darcy Weisbach equation, DW equation, we have this factor, which is depend on the renal number and the roughness of the pipe and uh, uh, also smooth of roughness of the pipe. While uh, we have uh, William Hazen formula, it will depend on the diameter of the pipe and the S, which is the hydraulic uh, grade line line. This is what I told you, this should be between one to 3%. And then the C is the uh, as, as a, as a, a Hazen coefficient. This Hazen coefficient will be between 100 to 150 unit less. For a new pipe, for example, for high density polyethylene pipe, new, we will, the C value, it means equal to 150. You, when, you, uh, when you have the catalog of these pipes, you can, they will tell you, the manufacturers tell you this pipe's uh, C value or William Hazen's coefficient is equal to 150. If we have, uh, let me say, a pipe, which is an old pipe, uh, the value of C will come down. May be, it may might be 80. It will depend of the, the forecast iron pipes of for ductile iron pipes. The C value of William Hazen value will be about 130. So the, hand, the C value will depend on the type of the materials and so. Uh, 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 we will come to design these five network in the next lecture, but now you have the idea and you have the criteria that we need them uh, to design a network. Uh, we will stop here and if you have any questions, please, uh, I will be ready for that. No questions, doctor. Have a nice one. Uh, no questions, too. Everything is clear.